Hello and welcome to General Organic Chemistry Part 1. There is no specific topic in organic chemistry called General Organic Chemistry. Basically, this topic deals with the fundamental and basic concepts that are often used in understanding chemical reactions, organic chemical reactions and behavior and properties of molecules. In this part one video we're going to look at hybridizations of carbon and its effect on its properties. So we're going to start with the sp3 hybridization of carbon and we're going to see how this hybridization affects the properties of carbon. The first point here that we need to understand is that the geometry about in sp3 hybridized carbon is a tetrahedron and I'm sure we've learned that in our basic lessons that tetrahedron is the shape for every sp3 hybridized system. Now whenever in a compound you find a carbon's valency of 4 is satisfied by sigma bonds alone then that carbon is said to be saturated. Now a carbon being saturated and a compound being saturated are two different things. A carbon is saturated when all bonds around the carbon are sigma bonds and its valency is satisfied. No charge. But when a compound has to be saturated or unsaturated, we need also to understand that even a ring in a molecule can make it unsaturated. For example, cyclohexane is an unsaturated molecule because it has got a ring but all the carbons in it are saturated because their bonds, their valency of 4 is all sigma bonds. Now, rotation about a carbon, single bond carbon is free and this leads to what we call as conformational isomers. Now we're going to do the details of isomers in the, in the specific lesson when we deal with isomers but here I just want to make a point that isomers are basically two different compounds having the same molecular formula. The difference in those compounds can arise due to any parameters. For example, it could be as simple as the free energy of the molecules. So isomers generally are portrayed as molecules with the same molecular formula and different structural formula but that does not take care of stereoisomers. So basically isomers are those in which two compounds having some different properties have the same molecular formula. It's like two different people having the same name. There is actually no connection between the two. Now conformational isomers are very specific isomers that, that are quite often found in saturated systems. Now around a carbon single bond carbon the rotation of the groups is free. They can freely rotate. For example if I look at ethane, ethane can be found in two different ways, two distinct opposite ways in which we call this part as a eclipsed conformation and this part as the staggered conformation and this particular way of denoting the molecule is called the Sawhorse projection. Now let's try and understand the 3D structure of the conformations of ethane. Now I'm going to just take a link to the ChemSketch 3D option. So this is a freeware ChemSketch 3D option if you want to know what software I'm using. Now this is as you can see the ethane and if you look at this you will notice that from this direction you notice it is eclipsed. The front three bonds are sort of superimposing the rear three bonds and this carbon-carbon bond this is the bond around which the rotation can take place this means this entire these three groups can freely rotate about this bond without having these three to rotate so if I put atoms in them this is how it looks so this is ethane in its eclipsed form and now let's look at uh, the other one. This is the staggered. So again I'm going to take up the 3D chem sketch and we're going to look at the staggered format. Look at this. I've rotated the eclipsed conformation just by 60 degrees and I get this. Now you see the bottom three, the, the ones at the behind, these three are arranged in a different man in manner than the front three. So this is the staggered one. Now, 
Uh, having said this, so let's look at various other ways of drawing conformations. The conformations can also be drawn by another method called the Newman projection. In the Newman projection, what we do is we draw a conformation by drawing a circle. A circle denotes a carbon atom and another circle behind the circle which is being superimposed by the front one is said to be the carbon atom at the back. The dotted lines denote the bonds attached to the carbon at the rear and the solid lines denote the bonds attached to the carbon atoms in the front. And we are only allowed to move the front three bonds, only rotate the front three bonds as opposed to the back three bonds. So the rear three bonds remain stationary. Now this is the staggered form of ethane. We call it the staggered conformation. Now in the staggered conformation you will notice that the atoms are as far away as possible as they can be in any system. Now as opposed to this, there is the eclipse form in which these front three bonds superimpose the rear three bonds. Now this would make the eclipse conformation a little high in energy due to the bond, bonded electron repulsion. So if you want to convert a staggered into an eclipsed, you got to give the staggered a three kilocalorie energy and that converts it into the eclipsed. So you can see the eclipsed has a higher energy than staggered. And this is called the torsional energy or the torsional strain. And an ethane molecule will actually look like this and you can see it freely rotating. That means at every moment of time staggered and eclipsed are converting into each other by releasing or absorbing energy and you can see all infinite angles in between these two as it is rotating it is passing through various phases all those phases are different different conformations so there are infinite conformations in ethane and they all have different potential energy that's why they are said to be conformational isomers now if we were to understand their potential energy, we'll draw a potential energy change during rotation diagram. So this is the diagram between potential energy and rotation. Now here I'm going to take this as this one as the staggered. This one is our uh, molecule which is going to rotate. Okay, I'm going to rotate this and as this rotate you notice the graph going up and coming down. So this is where we're going to see how the rotation happens and then you'll move, you'll notice the graph moves in accordance to the rotation here. So let's check that. I'm rotating it and I'm moving the graph simultaneously. I'm going to play this once and I'm going to play this again till you're able to get this. It's rotating, eclipsed reached, staggered reached. Now this could be a little faster so I'm going to do it again. Now notice that this is going to rotate. As this rotates, the energy of the system increases. It reaches the peak value at eclipsed and comes back at the staggered. Notice this. Up, eclipsed, down staggered. Let's see this once more. Rotation, graph going up, eclipsed, comes down, staggered again. So that is the potential energy curve with respect to the rotation angle. Let's check out the, now this barrier is the 3k cal, the original strain. Now let's check out the um, same thing in the case of butane. We're going to look at C2, C3 bond conformation. So this is my reference molecule, this is the one which is going to rotate. and this is the eclipsed one. So the way it is right now, this is eclipsed. Now I'm going to rotate this molecule clockwise by 60 degrees and we'll keep getting a new new conformation. I rotate this by 60 degree clockwise. So the eclipse gets a new form. Now this is not the staggered because the bonds may look staggered but the groups are not staggered. The groups are not opposite. The each group, similar group has to be 180 oriented to get a staggered. So this is some way staggered but not staggered. We call it the gauche form or the skew form. I rotate by 180 again and you notice looks like eclipse but it's not eclipse because the methyl groups are not eclipsing each other. Therefore, this we call as the partially eclipsed. Rotate by 60 again 
and now you get the staggered format where the metals are opposite, the hydrogens are opposite, that's are staggered. Let's look at the potential energy curve in this case. So potential energy changes during rotation and this is our rotation energy graph. Now here this is the first molecule staggered and this is my reference molecule. Now I'm going to rot rotate the reference molecule uh, in such a way, I'm going to rotate it anti, anti, anti clockwise. This Me is going to get rotated and come here. The hydrogen is going to get rotated. It's going to go here. This H will go here. So I'm going to rotate this anti clockwise here and you'll notice the movement of the graph along with the rotation. And in this case, I'm going to pause the graph the moment it reaches a landmark. For example, rotation, I reached this point. You notice the same? Let's go back again and check once more. The graph is going up, it's rotating, and I reach this part. And if you remember, this is staggered, and this is partially eclipsed. Comes back, okay, this is gauche form. All right, again, anti clockwise rotation. I get pure eclipsed, completely eclipsed. Then I rotate, I'm sure I'm going to get the mirror image of this. I'm going to gauge form again. So I'm going to again reach this point. And then again it's going to go up because again I'm going to rotate anti-clockwise. It's going to get the mirror image of this one. I'm going to get partially eclipsed and then staggered again. Now here the energy barriers are about 3.4 between the staggered and the partially eclipsed and about 4.4 to 6.1 between the gauche form and the completely eclipsed form. So let's understand what are conformers, different arrangements of atoms that can be converted into one another by rotation about single bonds are called conformations. Conformations cannot be isolated. Please understand if you want uh, only eclipsed ethane, eclipsed butane, you just can't have it because these are going to constantly rotate. The room temperature has enough energy to provide these molecules the ability to rotate from one form to the other. So these conformations cannot be isolated. They're not frozen. They're always constantly getting interconverted. And one of the hallmarks of an sp3 hybridized carbon is that it is least electronegative of all the hybrid carbon atoms. That is because it has the smallest s character. S character is only 25%. Lesser the s character, less is electronegativity. That is because with the s character is less, p character is more, the orbital is much bigger in size because it will have more of p content in it. Larger the orbital, bigger the atom, bigger the atom, lesser is the electronegativity. So let's check on the next hybridization that is sp2. And as we know the geometry of an sp2 hybridized carbon is triangular planar. And all the valencies of carbon in this case cannot be satisfied by sigma bonds. It is bound to form pi bonds. Such carbons are called unsaturated carbons and rotation about a carbon double bond carbon or a carbon single bond carbon in a ring is restricted and this leads to what is known as geometric isomers. For example, if you look at these two cases and again we're going to do the details of this when we do isomerism separately you'll notice that in these two compounds you cannot rotate these groups without rotating these groups and get this. It's not possible to flip this across and get this because carbon double bond carbon rotation is not free. It's a hindered rotation. It's a blocked rotation. Therefore this molecule is frozen. This molecule is frozen. They are going to exist separately. You can isolate them. Same is true even if you have a ring with a single bond. Now even though this is technically a single bond but a part of the ring therefore it is not possible to twist this because if I try to rotate these two groups the entire ring is going to twist. Please understand it is not as if I'm going to flip these two across up and down. So they can't get flipped across and become this. If I want to rotate this all these bonds are joined together. So what will happen is when I try to rotate this these this part of the ring gets twisted which is not possible. So this is frozen this is frozen and these are called geometrical isomers. 
and uh, so if you want to know what geomantic isomers are they are the different arrangements of atoms in space arising out of a hindered rotation about a carbon single bond carbon or a double bond and that is known as geometric isomers now sp2 hybridized carbon definitely has a higher electronegativity as compared to the sp3 carbon that's because it has got more s content it's got 33 percent s content and the last hybridization in this video is our sp hybridization carbon now such a carbon has a geometry which we all know is a linear geometry all the valencies of carbon are still not satisfied by sigma bonds this is called an unsaturated carbon and as we know since the s character is almost 50 percent it has got the highest electronegativity among all the carbon atoms of various hybridizations so this video is basically about the various hybridizations of carbon and how these hybridizations would affect the properties of those carbons in part two we're going to start with various effects starting with the inductive effect so thanks for watching this video